opportunity to uh, provide a presentation to you ladies. Um, RAOS uh, is maybe a little bit not that well known to uh, a lot of people in the aviation community, so it's good to be able to get uh, out there and let people know what we do. So let's go straight into it. So uh, I'm just going to basically talk a little bit about me and then I'm going to talk a little bit about RAOS just to give you some context of, of what we're talking about. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, uh, we're going to combine our presentations between Harley and myself so if we can keep all the questions to the end, then we'll be happy to answer them at the end there. So I guess the question is, how did I get here? Well, on a virgin flight this morning. But, <laughs> <laughs> but how did I get here? Um, it was actually a very interesting um, trip from my point of view. I didn't actually think about learning to fly or fly other than just maybe thinking one day it'd be great to jump into a hang glider and leap off a cliff. Um, when I was young, I get older now and a bit more, a bit more studious <laughs> about that. My husband bought me a trial flight, and he actually got me into the flying um, side of things, mostly because he was interested in himself. So I started out as a recreational pilot, but I've also got a PPLA. I started flying in '99 just for fun and uh, stress relief, believe it or not. <laughs> um, we ran our own music shop, my husband and myself, for 20 years, uh, and so we needed to have a break, and flying was definitely a complete break from that. Uh, also, uh, with our, uh, with my husband, we built a little Jabiru aircraft from a kit, um, which was an awesome amount of fun and taught us a lot about flying. And that's one of the things that, that uh, we encourage uh, through RAOs, is building your own aircraft and, and then obviously flying it, which we did. And uh, Paul mentioned tomorrow airport earlier, I actually live on the airport. So I'm living the dream, basically. Got a house, house on the front of the on the street and walk straight back to my hangar and push my plane out onto the taxiway and go flying. So that's about as good as it gets as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I have been the Chief Flying Instructor at Tamora for about five years, um, which was a, an awesome experience too, to actually get to, to be um, the one in charge. So, something that all of us like to do, I think, to be in charge. Uh, I'm current pilot examiner within RAOS uh, as part of my role as the National Operations Manager, which I'll get to in a second. And there it is. So I'm actually, I believe, the first female to be the National Operations Manager. I'm definitely the first female L2 maintainer in RAL. That doesn't mean I'm the first maintainer of aircraft anywhere because there's lots of other ladies more worthy that have done that. But uh, within RAL, I'm the first one to take a, an L2 maintenance approval. So the L2 maintenance approval allows me to um, maintain aircraft that are used for flying training uh, as opposed to just private hire. So some of the highlights of my career as a CFO, I was only quite short, but I, I intend to go back to it um, once the uh, RAL's role is um, uh, when I've done everything I possibly can, uh, was to uh, foster some um, ladies and encourage ladies to maybe overcome some of their fears of flying when they're flying with their partners. Because what's one of the concerns that a lot of partners have is what happens when he goes, Ugh, and there's a problem. So I was actually teaching these ladies how to fly from the right seat just for emergency purposes, how to use radios, GPS, transponder, contact ATC, our friends at air services, and say what the heck do I do, and then get the aircraft down in some form that's manageable and controlled, because that's where usually the problems happen. So I call it the Partners of Pilots Emergency or POPE course, because you know that's what you're going to do. That <laughs> 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 <No> problem. <laughs> Um, and the photos there are from ladies at uh, Cessnock and also at Tamora. I was also doing a navigation course, you can see there at the bottom shot there, uh, just helping the ladies to assist their men to navigate. I uh, also uh, helped a few young ladies and women uh, reach their personal milestones. So Emma at the top there got her first solo, uh, achieved her first solo in her dad's aeroplane. Uh, we had Gabby, Gabby Shardlow, who uh, actually used to be uh, working for, I think it was Qantas, as an um, airline uh, hostess. So she went first solo, eventually pilot certificate. Uh, the lady there, I've forgotten her name, but it was her first flight in a light aircraft. So that's a pretty special moment to introduce someone to the joy of flying when they're as nervous as hell. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure all of us have done that at some stage because that's part of the joy of why we fly. Uh, and my neighbour, Robin, who also lives on the airport there, we both moved um, independently about a year apart from Nowra to live on Tamora Airport. So we're talking about renaming one of the streets in Tamora Shoalhaven Street because there's so many people from Nowra. Uh, and then some other outstanding moments. Uh, young Callum there 
first first lesson uh, formation flying, which is some of the, the fun stuff we do at tomorrow. A lot of uh, formation indoors pilots there. I got to do Matt Hall BFR. Yeah. <laughs> How cool was that? I was just sitting there going, "Oh, Matt." <laughs> and the other Matt there, young Matt Warren, um, he was only this big when I met him, and he's now six foot something, and he's off to the RAF. Uh, and I'm kind of proud that I started him on his journey. There's also another uh, young Matt Warren there, Matt Warren, who's now about eight foot four, eight foot five, and he's got a big head and he's got a big um, head and a big 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 head uh, so, yeah, I started his career as well. It's kind of a special moment. Then we, uh, at an organisation there at Tomorrow Airport, uh, Tomorrow Flyers, we did a, um, a couple of, of events. Young Isabella uh, had had um, quite a serious bout of cancer when she was quite young and recovered. Uh, I got to take her up in a first flight that was other than medically required and I couldn't stop her talking. <laughs> I had to almost put my hands over her mouth so I could make a radio call to let everyone know that I was coming back to the airport. Uh, and we also had a Country Hope weekend, uh, which uh, basically was a lot of the children um, and parents in the area of the River Inner there who'd been touched by some sort of uh, life threatening illness. So we had a weekend there to take them flying and, and show them what, the, what the flying was all about. Along with supporting the Women of Aviation Weekend in 2016, we flew 84 women um, as a combined group which was awesome to actually just get, again, a room for a heap of ladies who are maybe a bit nervous, get them up in a plane. Uh, some of them actually did some aerobatics, and Leone probably took some of them up too. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the, the real reason for, for why I'm here. I mean, it's fun to, to share all about that sort of stuff, and that's really why we're here as well, is to share the fun. But my role um, as operations manager is to be responsible for the standards of flight training for the 9,000 members of RAOs. Um, and I also am responsible for the 160 plus schools that we um, manage. And we're delegated by CASA, so they're over our shoulder fairly carefully. Um, and we're, um, we're basically, to give you a bit of context for RLs, we started as a, effectively an act of civil disobedience back in the, um, back in the 80s, um, in the Australian Ultralight Federation days. We basically said we didn't want to fly under CASA rules. Um, and we wanted to do our own thing, so they were um, quite gracious enough to allow us to set the organisation up and do that. We've progressed a long way since then, but um, some of our members still have a civil disobedience <laughs> gene in, the, in their structure. Uh, another part of my role is to assess an uh, issue. I don't actually go out and assess every pilot certificate, but um, I can go and assess pilot certificates at, at different places. I also um, assess instructors and approve chief flying instructors and pilot examiners. So there's absolutely no pressure there to get that right <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, and unfortunately I do uh, attend fatal and serious accidents and do investigations. I've been trained with the basic uh, ATSB in, in investigative qualifications. So uh, the photo you see behind there was a month after I first started working as assistant ops manager. Mm -hmm. My boss rang me up and said, oh, we just had a plane into Ferris School. And I said, no, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had. <laughs> ATSB investigated that one because it was high profile, but uh, I have travelled the country, unfortunately, having to deal with that aspect of our, our industry. So challenges ahead at the moment. Um, we're actually looking for uh, access to controlled airspace for RL's members, because at the moment uh, we're not allowed to uh, operate in CTA unless the pilot also holds PPL or RPL qualifications. So I've got the challenge of creating the entire access training <coughs> program, uh, standardisation for the instructors, and obviously making sure our pilots don't make a mess of that. Um, it's fairly important. And creation of national training program for Haley's help. <coughs> it's for Haley, because my computer skills are, um, I can type pretty well, but uh, when it comes to graphics and things, this is all Haley's work. So uh, we're very lucky to have someone with all these expertise to do that and to improve the sort of uh, communications as an organisation that we have because we have been pretty much an aero club kind of mentality back in the day. With no disrespect to aero clubs, but that's sort of where we started. We're now moving to become a much more professional organisation and Haley's part of that. So where has RLs taken me? Oh, I've been to all states, which is awesome. White Gum Palm over in WA, that's an awesome flying if you're ever over that way. Um, Oskosh at Narrabon just recently, Avalon for a number of events. Nat Fly was our national flying event, which we, um, we stopped doing to try and foster better uh, communications and better interaction with other organisations at Oskosh uh, and tomorrow. 
yeah, well, I had a few school inspections in every state. I got uh, offered uh, the opportunity to fly the Qantas simulator, uh, the actual training simulator at, at Kingsford Smith, which was awesome. Done presentations across the country, um, and I've managed to fly with some amazing and talented pilots, which is the other fantastic part about our industry. You never know who you're going to fly with um, and who's going to be checking you or who you're going to be checking. And I've shared some fantastic and frightening flying experiences. <laughs> We've all done that. I haven't had non dead engine failures. <laughs> so why join RALs or what does RALs offer to a room full of, of pilots? Um, effectively, we like to think we're the affordable alternative to CASA. Um, now, the limitation for our category at the moment is the aircraft max takeoff weight can't exceed 600 kilos. So it's the light end of town. We have got a proposal before CASA at the moment to increase that to 1,500 kilos, which means that probably a lot of the aircraft that you might be able to fly now you might be able to fly under RALs, and we're a whole lot easier to deal with in terms of bureaucratic um, requirements, but also because we're just nice people. <laughs> um, the driver license health standard, self-declared standard, is all that's required to fly our aircraft as a pilot and carry passengers. Our instructors have a slightly higher requirement, obviously. You can maintain your own aircraft. Should you choose to get your hands dirty, you can actually, if you're not using the flying training, you can do your own maintenance under our system. And the hours that you uh, uh, accumulate through RALs count towards your RPL, PPL, CPL, hour for hour. And we're generally quite a bit more affordable per hour because our aircraft are quite a lot uh, cheaper to, to maintain and operate. And the other big one is insurance. Because as an RALs member, when I go flying in my aircraft and I take anyone as a, as a passenger, I automatically have a quarter of a million dollar passenger liability insurance if anything should happen, and also have third party uh, property damage insurance. So if you crash into the farmer's prize cow, the passenger's going to be okay, and the prize cow, you can pay for the prize cow. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have quite modern aircraft because uh, we've only been around for a little while. Uh, now that's not to say we don't have some older aircraft, we've got some, I'll show you some of the types of aircraft we have in a minute, but uh, on average our training fleet are probably five to ten years old. So that's a real advantage they haven't had 30 years of people throwing up in them. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are the aircraft that we register? <coughs> okay, so that's a power parachute, all right? So you can basically sit in a little uh, base uh, with an engine behind you screaming and a, um, a parachute and fly around and have an absolute ball in those things. And very, very inexpensive to fly. Um, I think you can spend sort of $20,000 and get yourself up in the air. Now they are limited a bit to weather conditions, etc., but you're still up in the air. <coughs> then there's the trike or weight shift um, area. So effectively hang gliders with, a, again, a pod suspended underneath and a motor, two seat usually. They're getting quite sophisticated. They'll travel up to around um, 80 knots, which is quite fast in the cockpit aircraft. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably spend between sixty dollars to $100,000 or something like that. <coughs> and again, you can maintain it yourself. <coughs> And we've got, this is one of my neighbour's aircraft. So he built this aircraft, it's a bit hard to see there potentially, scratch built from plans. So he effectively <coughs> made every part of that aircraft. And it's currently going through its test flying phase now. Um, he's having an absolute ball. It's called a, a legal eagle. <laughs> Don't know whether it means it's more legal because it's got that in the title. And then we've got the, uh, probably one of the most identifiable aircraft from our fleet, the Thruster, which is an Australian built aircraft. Two-seat aircraft was the genesis of our flight training program back in the, th um, in the 80s, 30 years ago. Before that, instructors used to basically run alongside or drive alongside in a car and shout instructions at the single-seat aircraft. <laughs> so we had a few fatalities, a few accidents. CASA started getting a bit upset, so we developed training aircraft, and that was the genesis of our general training fleet. And now we have things like that. The black shape prime is probably that looks pretty sexy. Like 160 knots, still still fits in our category. So um, we cover a wide range of speed and, uh, and a, you know, aircraft use. So what does RALs actually do? Well, you administer the aircraft on behalf of CASA, and they come in and audit us, as CASA does. Um, we believe we're a unique organisation in the world because there's no other organisation that I'm aware of that's been delegated to do this by the Civil Aviation Authority of the country. So while there are 
BMAAs in the UK and New Zealand's equivalents, etc. We are solely responsible for administration and issuing pilot certificates. And now that CASA has recognised that towards the RPL, PPL, etc., we've even got a bit more kind of street cred. So I'm pretty proud of that. Driver licence health standard, as I said. Uh, the pilot certificate is valid for either a three axis weight shift or power parachute aircraft, so different training obviously regimes for each of those. Uh, Recognised as equivalent for the RPL. We interact with all the major f federal and state authorities, and that causes its own little interesting moments too. But we have very good working relationships with CASA, with the um, uh, AMSA people, ATSB, with state police and coronial units as a result of our um, fatal accidents. So we, we kind of create a bit of a puzzle for these government organisations because we're not a government body, we're private. So they don't quite know how to deal with us, but mm -hmm. we've got MOUs and we've got agreements, we've got very good, uh, as I say, relationships with all the major organisations now. And we also interact, <coughs> it's not on that slide, but uh, with other uh, recreational aviation organisations such as the SAAA, Australian Sport Motorcraft Association, Australian Parachute Federation, HGFA Hang Gliding Federation, Lighting Federation, any of the acronym alphabet groups as I call them. Um, we obviously have interactions quite regularly with those groups. And the, the thing that I'm probably most proud of is that RAOS gives people the first affordable step towards whatever career they want in aviation. I didn't start flying an RAOS aircraft with the intent of standing up here and becoming National Operations Manager. That wasn't the plan at all, but it happened. I'm not sad that it has happened. But I haven't, uh, I haven't gone any further into the big end of town. I'd love to, and I'll take my hat off to anyone that's, that's gone down airlines, military, charter careers, you know, whatever is gets you in the air and gets you uh, enthused. That's what it's all about. But it can start quite affordably with us, which is good. <coughs> we also uh, provide endorsements on our aircraft, um, as you do with the GA world and every other world. So formation, waterborne float and hull, see a little jabberoo over there on floats. They're quite popular over in Canada. Uh, Inflight adjustable, low level, retractable, cross country, and glider and hang glider towing. Um, so there's quite a range of things you can do through the organisation. The question is, what do we do in the future? Well, as I said, we've got a proposed weight increase there for 1,500 kilos uh, max takeoff weight. So that means a lot of the amateur build aircraft from the SAAA, the Sport Aircraft Association of Australia, can be registered with us means they don't have to deal with uh, the government uh, departments. Uh, even your um, basic Piper Tomahawks and Cessna 172s with a limitation of two seats um, is what we're proposing. So uh, it just allows perhaps a little bit more of the cross-pollination. Harry's going to talk about in a, in a minute the cross-pollination that we're actually working actively with CASA to try and, and get closer relationships between what we do and what GA does because there's no difference. Access to controlled airspace, it's going to be very exciting. And, and most of the time our members really just want to transit. Um, they don't want to get squeezed up on behind the Coffs Harbour step, along that nasty mountain range. They don't want to get squeezed through Townsville. They don't want to have to go around West Sale. We just exclude from that airspace at this stage. So it'd be really good to be able to safely transit that. And as we all know, controlled airspace is too much toll, usually. So. <laughs> Uh, we've rolled out a modernisation project with our uh, membership, which is an interesting challenge because the average age of our member is 50, I believe, at the moment, 49, yep. So we aren't talking necessarily completely tech savvy. So uh, there's still a bit of paper, but we've reduced our paper load. What was it, Ali? It was a, a pallet of paper a month, down to a ream a month. <laughs> Hallelujah, we've saved the trees. <laughs> yeah. And it's been a bit of an interesting challenge along the way, but we spent um, something like $300,000 modernising the, the organisation to, to take advantage of that, and it's still ongoing. Part of Haley's role is, is part of that modernisation as well. Um, and we do get the occasional uh, member that is not happy about that, but on we go. Online training courses, I'll let Haley talk about in more detail in a minute. Uh, and as an example of what we're doing, Haley's actually doing a live stream on Facebook at the moment. That's kind of cool. For RAOs to be doing that sort of stuff. Wait, 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 wait. Are you? Excellent. But it's kind of cool for us because we've never really thought about doing that sort of stuff. We've never tapped into social media in the way that we are now. So we've got 10,000 Facebook likes um, and we're live streaming things like our AGMs, our safety summits. Um, we're producing hangar talks for our CFIs to deliver in hangars and they just hit a button and have a, a video, which again, Harley will show you some of as well. 
So it's exciting times, it's really, really exhausting, but it's exciting times to, to be involved in an organisation going through that much change. Uh, Air Force Cadet Training, through the Gliding Federation of Australia, they're, they're already doing Air Force Cadet Training. We've had an approach from the AASC. That's obviously in its early stages, but the, they're looking at our organisation quite favourably because of the affordability of the aircraft, the, the maintenance ability, uh, and just the benefits the organisation offers. So that's exciting. Tomorrow the world. <laughs> um, so just to finish up there on my, uh, my chat, and I'll hand over to Hayley in a second. Um, they're just some photos from my flying experiences, so uh, to have on Beaver over in San Francisco, um, flying over the gorgeous canola and wheat paddocks in Tamora. I don't know what that aircraft is, if anyone can identify it, but one in the left corner. It's just a cool looking thing that turned up in Tamora one day. And the fog in the middle of the, the screen there is what happens when you expect a perfect day and it doesn't happen. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll hand over to, uh, to Hayley. That's the end of my presentation, but we'll, we'll, I'll be back for questions as required. So I'll come over and swap the camera. And then we'll just talk amongst ourselves while I'll have you set up the presentation. <laughs> okay, it's much more comfortable being at the back of the room than the front, I must say. <laughs> Um, so who am I? My name's Hayley Wilson. I'm the Learning and Development Coordinator for Recreational Aviation Australia. Um, don't hold that against me. Just a show of hands, who are the Australian netball supporters in the room? Australian netball supporters? There's a door over there if you can just quietly leave when you're ready. <laughs> hey, we've still got the ropey. Um, anyway, I'm a bit of a class clown in the office um, and I you know, like to keep things a bit alive. I haven't been with RAOs for, for that long, um, only since the beginning of the year. Um, and I absolutely love my job, I love my role and love the staff. And we have a good joke pretty much most days, which just makes it more fun. Um, for me, a bit about my experience or my background, I've been in um, sort of uh, training, education, uh, marketing for about over 12 years now. Um, and being able to bring what I can bring to this organisation and industry um, is quite exciting and there's lots of exciting things yet to, to come with RALs. Um, again, a little, bit, a little bit about me as a person. Um, I was a New Zealand track and field athlete, so I used to throw javelins. Um, that was a little while ago now. Um, but I guess for me, like I've been through training, I've, I've done coaching, I've done lots of different things in the sport and um, I think for the thing that, that I really loved the most was when when I was throwing that I just felt at one with the javelin, as weird as that might sound. Um, but it was, it was just an awesome experience and I can only kind of imagine what it must be like um, when you're on the runway, when those wheels are lifting off and that sense of freedom and accomplishment you must feel, it must be awesome. Um, you know, I, I was one of those, sorry to say it, those, um, those people on the Boeing 747 when there's a decent bit of turbulence I'd be <laughs> gripping hold of the and things, the armrests quite quite severely. Um, but Jill helped me with that. Um, uh, as a couple of months ago, went to Tamora, um, saw her little tech man plane and thought, what the hell? <laughs> um, couldn't believe I was actually going to get at it. Um, but I did. And yeah, it was, it was an awesome experience. We were up there for an hour, felt like 10 minutes. Um, yeah, it was just awesome. Like, actually got to fly and thought, oh, this is pretty cool. I had no idea what I was doing, but anyway. Um, <laughs> um, got down and then I had the, um, I had the luck of actually getting in a, a black rocket, I think it was an RV-10. Rocket. rocket. It's a rocket. Um, anyway, got up in that and did some loops and rolls and things like that, and um, yeah, that just, <laughs> that just blew my mind. Um, I had to change my undies a couple of times, I think, for the time I got down. Um, yeah, it was, it was unreal, um, but exciting time, so. Yeah, that's enough about me. Um, as far as I think, you know, women can do anything. Um, I'm a very big believer in that. And being in this organisation, I've met, already met a lot of diverse um, women. So from anywhere between women who just love to fly um, and who don't like getting their hands dirty to those that do. And, um, you know, Jared, our assistant technical manager, who's probably watching on Facebook. Hey, Jared. He's got a cast on his leg. Um, he met a lady at Narrowmine at Oskosh um, 
he was judging aircraft at the time and she was busy taking photos of aircraft and he met up with her later on um, that day to find out she'd been a laney for 20 years and worked on United Airlines. So um, those kind of stories are really awesome. I don't know if Robin's in the room. Is Robin here? No, that's cool. Um, but yeah, so awesome little stories like that. So. And I think maybe one of the, the reasons there aren't a lot of females in flying, from what I can see, and I'm a newbie and an umpty is what I'd call myself, um, there's, there's not a lot of marketing to, to females and there's, there's a lot directed at sort of males and fun and adventure and stuff like that, but there's not a lot really directed at, at females. So um, I'd kind of like to think I'm going to be a part of maybe changing that or helping with that. Um, this uh, hands up those of you who are on this Facebook page. It's the Institute for Women of Aviation Worldwide. So is, is everyone pretty much here a liker of it? Mostly. If you're not, um, it's an awesome Facebook page as far as for women in aviation goes. Um, the support, the stories, they're awesome, like um, amazing. We've got Melanie Astells who she's the um, only female pilot in the Red Bull race um, with you know with Matt. Um, yeah, with Matt Hall. Who he's a, obviously another he's a great supporter of RALs. Um, then you've got the the youngest female commercial pilot in Africa at 19. Um, oh, it was just awesome to meet these people. Then the little girl on the bottom who's just the epitome of RALs. Here she is learning how to fly a plane before she can even drive a car. Um, I think that's pretty cool. But not only that, we've got um, us chicks. We tend to dominate the the, the RALs office as well. Um, in, in the senior management or leadership roles. We've got um, Katie, who Sam knows, where are you Sam? Um, who, who Sam knows as well. Um, and Katie's uh, uh, safety manager. She not only has an MBA, um, she's captain of warships. So I look at Katie and just go, how the, she's driven these big ships and um, this, yeah, blows my mind. Um, you've got Jill, who's, you know, um, you know, what you lack in height, you sort of make up for it. <laughs> 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 Just joking. Um, anyway, so we have, a, we have a good bunch. But what I'm, what I'm looking for um, and hoping, and maybe maybe we're talking to, to you all today, is that I'd like to actually try and find a female or female champions um, to help support women in aviation. Like we've got Matt Halls, um, Paul Bennett's and, and the like, but we don't really have a lot of chicks, and especially Australian chicks. So. I'd like to think we could find at least one that would kind of put their hand up and, anyway, stand out there and... Yeah, does anyone want to put their hand up or... Don't mean to put you on the spot. Um, anyway, check out RAOs or give us a call if you're kind of feeling in that. Or if you know of anyone that would be keen as well, because I'm pretty keen to help, you know, put the spotlight on women in aviation. Um, and this, this girl here, I'm just going to try and fire up this speaker because it's... An, it's a Mac and nothing works with Macs. Um, is Kyla Burgess, and Kyla Burgess was on uh, Sunrise, I think it was, um, and she's just, we just need more of her. She's 15, um, and this is just a, no, we go here. So it's her story. the idea like she's 15 um so first solo flight and we just need more of it um to help sort of you know get um, women into aviation 
as, as far as um, RAL supporting women in aviation, um, we've got the Women in Aviation Week, which, we're, which we heavily um, support. This is an air support pilot magazine, goes out to all of our members, um, goes out to this issue, which obviously you know, goes beyond our membership. Um, we send an e-newsletter out, which is we have about 13,000 subscribers on that. Um, so we're definitely behind you know, trying to encourage more females into flying. Um, the, the one on the right there is Deborah. Um, She's a, an interesting story. Um, she had a paralyzing fear of flying. So, so what did she do? She bought a plane and um, <laughs> learned how to fly it. And she's currently um, in the process of getting her pilot certificate. So, yeah, interesting. Um, this I just want to talk about. Like, I just kind of feel like that women get women. Um, it'd be, and it'd just be nice to see more female pilots out there where you can actually, like this, is just talk, talk to other female pilots. It's not like, you know, going down to the pub and having a BB with a bloke. Um, I just kind of think, well, maybe chicks just get chicks better sometimes. Even though all pilots like to share, I'm definitely not saying that. Um, the community-wise, um, again, like this, like these kind of events where we've got um, a group of women together and um, also maybe at things like Oscosh where we can create more um, women-specific um, events or tailored towards um, helping you know women get into aviation. Maybe one of the reasons we're looking at too is um, we're look, we have a, a lack of female instructors um, and maybe that's one of the reasons that you know we don't have females flying up. I don't know. Um, opportunity. Uh, we have the what's called as a gift scholarship program, so it's just a scholarship program, um, and we're looking at bringing young people but also females into aviation. Um, we had a record number of uh, uh, six, you know, I think we had 12% um, successful applicants as far as the females went this this year. Um, so it was really it was really really awesome. We'd like to see that grow to 50%, um, and we've only got about 5% 5% uh, current flying members um, with RLs at the moment and it'd be nice to throw a zero on that five um, and get it more to a 50-50 range. So um, definitely, definitely in need of the, the um, female side of things. Support. Um, just before I play this video, um, this video I created, uh, as a, it was created basically to help um, lobby CASA for Straight in, to help lobby CASA for um, at the last sport aviation uh, forum for CTA and MTO, which I'll just you know, start playing in.
it, yeah, that's just another video that, um, I guess on the note of the Ariels as well. I don't like being out here in front of the scene, I prefer to be behind the scenes, so. Um, anyway, um, my role, so um, again, I'd like to consider myself um, now as a, as a vital part or a key to helping um, RELs get their education out there um, in multiple streams as well. So I'd like to see less accidents and less incidents happen out there and hopefully through some education and videos and all sorts of multimedia um, formats that we can sort of help reduce that. Um, again, a bit of a nerd, so we, I create all the professional videos um, that you've just seen and you'll see another one soon, but check out our Ariel's um, YouTube channel, there's a lot on there and there's a lot more to come as well, um, just to give you a bit of an idea about what we're doing. Um, demonstration videos, we've just finished shooting an in-cockpit and out-of-cockpit um, R-lock, so run my loss control video, um, goes into all the, the different variations around that, um, and I, I think we've had pretty much all of our CFIs of been blown away with that. Um, safety, we've just uh, had the live um, recording of the safety summit. And we've had 200 and something hits on that in over a week. Um, so people are definitely wanting the information. Um, human factors, technical, we've shot a, a full weight and balance um, of, a, of an aircraft, so we're doing weight and balance um, training. Um, and organisational wise, um, again, the one that you've just seen, um, and more about supporting the industry. So. Uh, when it comes to the online education part of it, so I'm responsible for that as well. Um, so we've got the new learning management system. Um, before I arrived at RALs, there was literally nothing there. So I'm basically trying to grow the foundations with, um, with the education side of it um, and making it modern, fun and engaging because I'm not one for being boring. As you can see, the slides are all just full of colour as well. Um, and we've got the knowledge base, which um, is Katie's, Katie's baby, the safety manager. Um, and that's, that's an awesome tool. That's just bringing all the legislation stuff down into really um, lanes terms and sort of just giving our pilots basically more um, information. I'm just trying to hurry along as well. Nearly done. Um, and this is just to show you the kind of um, courses that I've um, helped create and are creating now as well. So we've done the L1 Maintenance Authority, which is now live. We've had 200 odd um, pilots through that now. L2, which is coming next year. Weight and balance is going live in the next couple of weeks. Um, human factors, safety management system, that's all happening. Instructor training, we're trying to make, um, basically bring in consistency across the board. So all of our instructors are kind of up here and not sort of all over the show. Um, and that's going to play a big part. Hangar talks, um, creating PowerPoint presentations like this, but doing voiceovers. So our CFIs can literally push play in a hangar. They can sit back and have a sausage and not have to talk. So we're trying to make it really easy for them. MTO and CTA is going to be a big part of next year as well. Um, and we've got the RATS, we've got our recreational um, aviation advisory publications, they new. Um, again, we're just trying to give as much information to our members as possible um, and all the other little things we've developed as well along the way. Um, before, I, well, not before, when I joined RAOs, um, this was our strategic plan overview. So safe, accessible, fun, and enjoyable. Um, within the first month or two, kind of help change that to educational, because enjoyable and fun are the same thing. Um, but education is going to play a big part in not only attracting more people into flying and women into flying, but also keeping people safe. Um, and on a safety note, I hope this video next play, um, I'll just show you a little bit of it, uh, just around what we're trying to, what we're trying to achieve. thing is basically what I do in my little nerd, nerd corner. Um, and this here, uh, this is actually before, I don't know if we're allowed to take any questions, but um, even from a couple of you, what I'd like to ask you guys or girls is um, what encouraged you into aviation in the first place? 
Can anyone tell me that? Oh, I'm actually really genuinely interested to know. Do we have anyone that's... My parents. Your parents? Cool. Neither are on fly, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. <coughs> cool parents. Anyone else? What, what got you started into flying? Like, why are you here? Is it's not flying, yep. but the, the, flight, the theory of flight is yep. absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. How they do that. How, they, how planes fly. Mm -hmm. cool. cool. This helps me develop these kind of cool videos. So if anyone's got any gold stuff, that would be really keen to know. Family holidays and being airborne, seeing the entire horizon. Yep. And you know, that's just something you don't see from being an earthling. True. I hear the word earthling a lot. I, I feel less of a nerd when I hear the word earthling. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is it then? Anyway. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah? I read a book um, that my mum bought me, and it was about how to fly my old fashioned plane to build a spirit. Yeah. And I got inspired to be Oh, wow. That's cool. Mm. Mm. Thank so, you. Does anybody have any more? So I just have one question in regards to, um, well basically this segment of the industry is uh, pretty vulnerable to serious um, um, uh, incidents and fatalities as well. And you mentioned that she does um, investigation as well. So I was just wondering that using education and your experience from the investigation, um, do you think you can, can help the industry, I guess, <coughs> to mitigate um, the serious Outcomes? Yeah. That's actually a really important point. Uh, uh, we, had, we had a crisis. We won't, we won't be on the promise. We had a crisis in 2013. We lost 14 pilots in um, 14 aircraft. Terrible accidents. And it, it shocked the whole organisation. It really made an impact on us. So we made a, a major strategy change with Haley, with Katie. We talked about um, starting a conversation with our members. And so far this year, touch wood. Uh, we've had five fatalities, so we're on track for a much better year. So we can actually see a direct correlation to talking about the accidents and incidents and not making it an adversarial, you won't do this kind of conversation. But let's take people alongside and say, hey, see what happened here? We don't want that to happen to you. That's the key thing that we got from that accident investigation. But no, they're, they're terrible things to happen to people. It's certainly the worst aspect of the job. But if some good can come out of the court, then it's good to do that. Perhaps if you can't help it, you know, at least learn from it. So. Yep, that's it. So if we don't have time to make all the mistakes ourselves, we will learn from other pilots' mistakes. We better stop, we've gone well over. Keep asking questions while we sit with one okay. question on that. Jill, um, I'm a controller upstairs. I'm just wondering if you're able to share some of the <coughs> some of your barriers to being allowed in the CTA. Uh, well, we, we actually, at this stage, we don't know what the barriers are. We've put the proposal to GASA. Yeah. We've engaged with their service, and, and their service has been really encouraging, which is excellent. So I don't know that there are going to be any barriers. Yeah. It's just that we haven't asked for a while. In 2006, we had it this close, and the new director of aviation safety came in and basically threw it out the So, I mean, are they not recognising your pilot training, or is it an equipped, is it an aircraft equipment? That, yeah, there's a number of, of factors. Yeah, yeah, pilot training, because we've only got, at this stage, 11 schools operating in Class D under exemption. Yeah. So it's actually a legislative issue. Mm. The, the legislation okay. we operate under are exemptions from the normal regulations, and until we get that change from CASA, yeah. we can't even yeah. go anywhere near it. Yeah. But we don't see any major issues, and we had very positive conversation with Mark Skibble before we left, and Shane Harley as the new acting DAS, and they said, there's no brainer. Yeah, it seems yeah. bizarre to me. Yeah. 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 Nice, good. It's good to hear that. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's it. Well, thank, thank you, you very much, ladies and gentlemen.